Amen. All right, well, it's great to be here tonight. Thank you so much for coming out on a Wednesday night. And of course, you probably already do anyway, but uh, it's great to be out here in Sacramento. And I've had a great trip so far. Got to see some of the state that I've never seen before. I've never been to Monterey, never been to Santa Cruz. So those are a couple of the places that we went to. And Old Sac, we went to there today, so it was really nice. Um, I got a little bit of a sunburn. I think somebody pointed that out today, so I, I'm not used to that up in the Northwest, having sunshine come out. So anyway, uh, I just want to thank Pastor Jimenez and, and the church for everything, and pre- always appreciate uh, the great hospitality that I get here, and, and I've had a great time. Thank you so much, Pastor Jimenez and Verity Baptist Church. It's like being back with family again, always being here to preach, and uh, so really appreciate you coming out, like I said, and I, I appreciate your uh, taking care of me like you always do. So um, so anyway, the title of the sermon tonight is Whosoever, Whosoever. And so in John 3, 16, let's look down at the verse there. And it says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a, uh, you know, the most famous verse in the whole Bible, and that verse contains the word whosoever. And so tonight I wanted to do just a a, a kind of a Bible study on the word whosoever and the statements that are said with that word whosoever in the Bible. So whosoever is actually a formal term for the word whoever. And whoever means what? Anyone, right? So whosoever is a great word in the Bible, and there's a lot of great verses attached to that word. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about being inclusive today. Who's heard about the word inclusive? Well, Whosoever is a word that includes everybody, and so God is inclusive, you know, not in the way that uh, we're being taught that we need to be, you know, in just the weird society that we live in today, but um, anyway, so God's not excluding anybody, so when it says the word inclusive actually means not excluding any of the other parties or groups involved in something, so when the word whosoever is used in the Bible, it's saying everybody, anyone. So, and there, like I said, there's many great verses in the Bible that teach that word whosoever, that has that word whosoever in it. And so I, I definitely just wanted to kind of, you know, have a Bible study about this tonight since it's a Bible study night. And uh, so the word whosoever um, always has an emphasis and a powerful point in any verse that's used in, in the Bible. There's 162 mentions of that word whosoever. I was really surprised at that number. I thought, well, maybe I could just get through the whole thing. And so I figured, you know, Pastor Menes said, you know, don't worry about the time tonight. He said, you know, don't, he said, preach as long as you want. And that's like saying sick him to a dog to me, right? <laughs> you guys were here last time. It was brutal. You know, on a, on a night of a potluck of all things to just preach that long. It's crazy. So there's 162 mentions of the word uh, whosoever. And we're not going to leave a stone unturned tonight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, <laughs> Brother Ray is about ready to get up and walk out. So. Anyway, uh, so I'm not going to preach as long as I want, so I'll, preach, I'll try to stay within the confines of a few hours. So anyway, I have three points tonight, three points, and point number one is whosoever as a painful warning, whosoever as a painful warning. And so the first mention, let's turn to uh, Genesis chapter four, and we'll look at the first mention of the word whosoever in the Bible. Genesis chapter four, verse number 15, and obviously That's the first book of the Bible, so it shouldn't be too hard to get there. Genesis chapter 4, verse 15 says, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And so the very first mention of the word whosoever is when it's dealing with Cain. And God said, Whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. So, Whosoever is a painful warning. Sometimes the word whosoever is used to warn people in the Bible about things. And and in this case, you know, Cain actually deserved to get killed. But God said, hey, if you if anybody slays Cain like he did to his brother, he's gonna, he's gonna, there, it's gonna be vengeance taken on him sevenfold. And that uh, is is a scary warning to anybody that would have killed him. So now turn to Exodus chapter 12, verse 15. And so we, we should understand that the word whosoever, you know, it, it, it includes everybody. And in some cases, it's a painful warning to people. 
Exodus chapter 12, verse 15 says, Seven days shall, shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And so God's making this point that, you know, you're going to do things the way I want you to do them. And it's just like salvation. You can't do however you want. There's a certain way you have to get saved. That's by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, by the way. And so this is, you know, this picture here is picturing uh, that if you, you know, eating leavened bread is, is a picture of sin. It's, it's a picture of partaking in sin. And so that picture was meant for us uh, to see that we have to eat the unleavened bread right? The bread of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, but the, the children of Israel, it says that they, that soul would be cut off for not doing this uh, Passover the way that they were supposed to do. So if you think about this spiritually, if you don't partake of the Lord Jesus Christ's broken body and perfect sacrifice, your sin will not be forgiven. You will be cut off also. And so looking at this spiritually, this whosoever, that's not something that we want to be is cut off from among the people. And obviously, that's talking about the children of Israel and the nation of Israel. But spiritually speaking, if you don't partake of the Lamb of God, then you're going to be cut off also just like anybody else would. So now flip over to Exodus chapter 22, verse 19. We'll see another whosoever here. And of course, I'm not really going through all 162 verses. But I'm, I'm going to hit the highlights, and I'm going to hit the ones that I think are the, the, the most powerful verses. So let's look at verse number 19 in Exodus chapter 22. It says... Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. So God puts a warning on someone that would be a sexual pervert, is what this guy, someone that would lie with a beast, an animal, as he would with a, a woman or a man. It's wicked, and God said, you know what, it's the death penalty. And so whosoever does this particular sin, that's the death penalty. And see, whosoever means anyone, doesn't it? And so God doesn't mince words when it comes to the death penalty. There's many different things that would be a death penalty situation. But Exodus 22, 19 clearly says that whosoever does this wicked sin, this perversion, it, it is surely going to be put to death. And our society would be a lot better if we put people to death that deserve to be put to death, right? Yes. I don't think anybody's gotten put to death in any liberal state that I've known of for a long time. So, I mean, they, they put all the serial killers to death pretty much, and and then, you know, there's some people in prison that are still probably serial killers, but you just don't hear about that kind of stuff very often anymore. You know why? Because the, the governors have put a, a, a moratorium on the death penalty. But see, God says that anybody that does that a sin, or there's multiple different sins. First-degree murder would be a sin uh, that should be put to death for, rape, and all these different things. But whosoever, you know, this is a, a warning to someone that would break God's law and his moral law in this way. Turn to uh, Exodus chapter 32, verse 33. <clears throat> now God here is talking in Exodus chapter 32, verse 33 to Moses. And Moses is interceding for the people because God's ready to just wipe out the children of Israel, make Moses this great nation. And Moses intercedes for him, for the, for the children of Israel. And he's, saying, he's basically saying, blot me out of the book. And so God's saying, no, I'm not going to blot you out of the book. And, and this is a good picture of also eternal security. Moses is saved. He can't be blotted out of the book, all right? But these people that, that uh, God is ready to smoke here, uh, he says, look at verse 33, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So God will blot people's name out of the book of life. That doesn't mean that that person's saved. That means their name is already there. But the Bible says that whosoever has sinned against me, this is what he's telling Moses, will I blot out of my book. So God will blot people out of that book. That's a painful uh, reminder that you can go to hell. You could actually lose, you could lose the ability to actually be saved. You could lose the ability to, uh, by sinning against the Holy, you know, speaking against the Holy Ghost and all these different things that God would pull, put you out of the book for, but, you know, once, you, you could actually be in the book till the very end in some cases, and then you die, and you're, that's your last chance. You're done. God blots you out of the book of life, and whosoever sins against God, that's going to, anybody that sins is going to go to hell without Christ, right? right. So whosoever has sinned against me, 
That, that would be anybody, right? That's what it says. Whosoever has sinned against me. Now look at Leviticus chapter 18, verse 29. Leviticus chapter 18, verse number 29. Look at verse 29. It says, for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off among their people. Now, I'm not, I don't have time to go through all the different abominations that, that are in uh, Leviticus chapter 18, but one of them is sodomy, all right? And lying with, you know, all these incestuous things that are in there, you know, giving your children over to Molech to walk through the fire. These types of abominations. God says, for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore, shall you keep mine ordinance, that you commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that you defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. God has a stern warning against people that would do the abominations that are listed in this chapter. And he says, whosoever commits any of these, they're going to be cut off from among, among their people. Now look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. This is another uh, chapter where there's a lot of warnings in it, but it also Moses talks about this prophet that's going to come, and of course he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at uh, verse number 19. It says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Moses is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and is, isn't that what happened? The people that he came to, the Bible says that he came to his own, and his own received him not. And so the people that didn't, didn't uh, hearken unto the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, that those people um, were, God required it of them, didn't he? He required it of the nation of Israel. And he came and destroyed their temple in 70 AD because they said uh, that they wanted um, his blood to be upon them and upon their children. Well, sometimes you get what you ask for, don't you? And so uh, and anybody that doesn't hearken unto the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, God is going to require it of them. So it's a warning that, you know, whosoever has a warning and as, um, you know, a warning to people that would not hearken unto the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's, let's uh, go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 1. And so God is warning us with these whosoever verses that anybody's included in that. Nobody gets to get out of that. When he's saying whosoever, it means anyone. Now look at Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. This is the time of year the sun starts coming out and people start you know, dressing uh, less than they would normally dress. And they start drinking and partying. And you know, this world that we live in, you know, alcohol is a big deal in this world. And billions and billions of dollars worth of alcohol is drank in this country. I don't know how many billions, but I know it's billions get drank in this country alone. I mean, recycling bins are filled up. Like, I'll, I'll be, you know, driving around, you'll see, like, the recycling bins are just f filled with wine bottles. Like, how many bottles of wine are you going to drink every week, bro? I mean, it's a lot. So, but, I mean, I'm sure some of you have neighbors where you, you see that they have their recycling bin and the wine bottles are overflowing out of there. But God has some strong language about someone that would be someone that drinks alcohol. Look at Proverbs chapter 20, verse number one. Look what it says. Wine is a mocker. What is a mocker? Someone that makes fun of somebody, right? So wine, you know, you, you're, you're someone that's, that wants to drink or you want to excuse the fact that you think, well, Jesus turned water into wine, so that means I can drink or whatever. But what does the Bible say in Proverbs? It says, wine is a mocker. In the end, wine is going to make fun of you, Right? You're going to do stupid things, and then people are going to laugh at you, and your bottle's going to laugh at you. Look, it says, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. What do people do when they get all drunk? They rage, and they get in fights. And it says, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Amen. Whosoever, that means anyone, right? Whosoever is deceived thereby is what? Very wise, yeah, alcohol is good for you. Have a little wine for, the, off, for the, your stomach's sake. You know, people will take that, see, you know, Timothy drank wine. But look, the Bible's saying that you're not wise if you're deceived by wine. Yes, sir. 
right? Isn't that what it says? That you're not wise. As Christians, are we supposed to be wise? Absolutely. And what is the opposite of wise? Foolish. So someone that is going to uh, drink something that would mock them, someone's going to drink something that's going to make them rage, you know, that's a person that's not wise. And any, people will make any excuse to be able to continue in the sin that they want to commit. And when it comes to alcohol, there's a lot of Christians out there that are like, oh, yeah, it's, it's fine to have a, a glass of beer after a hard day's work or whatever. But what does the Bible actually say? If you're deceived by that, you're not wise. Whosoever. Right. It's not like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I know that they have a problem with it, but I'm okay. I don't get drunk. I don't drink more than I'm supposed to. You know, there's not like some, some meter in your body that says, okay, you're drunk now. It comes upon you. You don't realize you're there, and then all of a sudden you're there. You're drunk. Right. And, how, and when do you know? Well, you're not going to know. You're just going to start acting like a goofball. You're gonna, and then that goofball turns into someone that's crying, and that goofball turns into someone that's raging and fighting people for no reason. They don't even know what they're doing. Falling down drunk and looking stupid. And you know what? Nobody likes to have a, some kind of a drunk hang on them. Who's ever had a drunk hang on you and you're like, get off me. What's wrong with you? You know, it's, it's annoying. It really is. So look at uh, Proverbs chapter 23. And it, the Bible says, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So are you deceived by it? Are you the one? Are you a person in here that, I mean, I'm not going to ask you for a raise of hands, okay? <laughs> but look, the Bible is against alcohol. And, and people, you know, it's against the consumption of alcohol. And it's, it's definitely against drunkards. You know, a drunkard isn't even supposed to be in the church. So if you're a drunkard, you know, you shouldn't be here. But what does it say? In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29, it says, Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without a cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. So yeah, oh yeah, you know, I just have a little, a little bit of, of alcohol every once in a while. You know what? If, if someone knows that and you're doing that and, and you're like trying to make excuses as to why it's okay, you're, you know what? You're being a stumbling block, first of all, to somebody that has had a problem with it. Amen. There's a lot of people probably in this room that have had a problem with alcohol. Even if you weren't like an addict of it, that you had a problem where once you were on it, you acted like an idiot. Once you were on it, you made mistakes you wish you could take back. Once you were on it, you're out of control. Once you're drunk, you're drunk, and you're going to do foolish things. But look what, the, look what it says, who hath woe? You know what woe is? Someone that's uh, just has hard, big problems in their lives. Curses, basically, is what it is. Who hath woe? Who has sorrow? You know, do you, do you want to be a person that's just filled with sorrow? That's why people drink alcohol, because they're, they want to just drown in, the, who's heard the term, drown in your sorrows? That's what people want to do. And it says, who hath contentions? You know what alcohol does? It makes people fight. It makes couples fight. It makes abusive homes. It makes someone beat their children beat their wife, or the wife beat their husband. I mean, that's, that happens too. Um, but, you know, it also, it, so it causes contentions. It causes contentions with friendship. It causes contentions in your life. Who have babbling? What's it, what's it talk about babbling? Who's ever seen some drunk idiot? And they can't even talk because they're just babbling and then spewing out a bunch of foolish things that they shouldn't be saying. Who hath wounds without a cause? You know, people that are drunkards that are really bad, they'll wake up and they got marks on them, they got scratches on them, they got bruises. How, do, how did I get this bruise? Well, you're too drunk to remember what happened last night. That's, what, that's, that's how. And these types of people, you know, these people that have wounds without a cause, you know, I've, I've watched people just be so drunk that they just walked and fell straight on their face on the pavement. You want to know how, you, that's going to leave a mark, I'm just saying. It's going to leave a mark. It's going to, you know, it's, if you fall straight on your face, drunk, it, it's going to hurt you. And I, I mean, I just had to look away. I, I, don't, I didn't know what else to do. He was like some homeless guy, but I mean, he just didn't move. I thought he was dead or something.
but that, you know, that, is that what you, you know, you, people that drink, they don't really realize that that's where it ends up. And maybe it doesn't end up like that for everybody. But it is a dangerous thing. And the Bible says, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So if that's you, I mean, there's, I don't know what your life is. I don't know what you do outside of here. And, you know, pastor doesn't know every single thing that everybody does. You know, people say that we're in a cult, but, you know, who, who's got the, uh, the thing in their house that says come to church? Who's got the speaker that says come to church? Is it, have you guys gotten that yet, the new people here? It's not true. You know, we don't control what people do. And I don't try to tr- control what people do in my church, but I, I'll tell you what I don't want them to do is to drink and be deceived by alcohol, right. to, be dr- to be drunken and think that they can control it. And there's people here that have had a problem with alcohol or drugs or whatever it is, and that's something that would be a huge stumbling block to them. Don't ever set, the, even if you think that that's true, that it's okay for you to drink, don't tell other people that. Because what are you doing? You're causing your brother to stumble. It's wrong. It's wicked. And so don't do that. But look, skip down to verse number 35. And here's the real problem with being someone that's given to alcohol and drinking. And there's a lot of stuff that happens in between these verses. I just don't have time to to cover it. But look what it says. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. And what is the problem with, with alcohol? Do you think that people, there's some people that are trapped in a cycle that they can't get out of because they're addicted to alcohol. And this is the type of person, that's what it's saying, is that this person will have all this stuff happen to them, and then they'll get up and seek it again. Because you know what? They're addicted to it. And so don't, don't get this attitude that you don't think that alcohol is addictive, or maybe, and maybe it isn't to you, but it is to other people. So don't be a stumbling block to somebody else, and don't be fooled by people that would say, well, these pastors, these Baptists are just crazy. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible talks about wine being a blessing. Yeah, it's a different kind of wine. It's called grape juice, or it's called fruit juice. It's not alcoholic. So when it's talking about this, do you think this is talking about grape juice? Absolutely not. It's talking about stuff that has alcohol in it. And you know what? It's poison. It literally poisons you. There's people that have died from just drinking alcohol one time. You know why? Because it's poison and our body couldn't handle it. And so we shouldn't have anything to do with that. Now let's look over in the New Testament at Matthew chapter 5, verse number 32. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. The Bible says, But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. There's a lot of people that have a hard time with this verse here too. You know, they they just can't get the, the, the fact that it says whosoever, Right? Does that mean anybody? It's not your special circumstance. It's not, I didn't know any better at the time. And look, I'm, I'm not trying to harp on people that have already made the mistake of getting divorced and remarried. I'm not, but I do want to warn people that haven't made that mistake or that think it's okay to just get divorced and remarried for any reason. You know, that's what the, that's what the Pharisees believed. But look what it says, that whosoever shall put away his wife for saving for the cause of fornication which happens before you consummate the marriage, by the way, causeth her to commit adultery. So when you divorce somebody, you're causing that person to commit adultery, and, who, and, what, and whosoever shall marry her that's divorced committeth adultery. So, you know, that song, Whosoever Surely Meaneth Me, when it comes to this verse and, and divorce and, and, and being remarried, whosoever meaneth you also, Okay. <laughs> Whosoever meaneth you, and yeah, that verse is about salvation. I mean, that, that song is about salvation and things like that. It's a great song. But whosoever meaneth you also, look, I, I, I'll tell you this, and I've said this before, that divorce and, and marriage issues are the biggest problems that I ever deal with as a pastor. They're hurt. Thing, I mean, just it's the hardest thing to deal with. And you can ask pastor. I'm sure he would agree that that's with the same thing, that it's, it's hard to deal with marriage issues because people just get divorced for any reason now. And then you got mixed families and you got all this kind of stuff going on and, and it's hurtful and it's hard. But look, what am I going to preach? Tell kingdom come 
I'm going to preach that if you put away your wife for any, re- you know, for any reason save for the cause of fornication, you're committing adultery if you get remarried. Don't come to me with your story. Don't come to me with, oh, but me. No, it's whosoever. That means anyone. So you, you're, not, you're not above this. Your situation isn't special. Just look what the Bible says and believe it. And then, you know, if you're like having a hard time in your marriage, then try to make it better. Amen. You know, it's not as bad as you think it is. And maybe it is, though. <laughs> but it can get worse. Right. You know what's worse? Divorce. That's right. You know what's worse? Your children having uh, no, not two parents in the home. That's right. And so work out your issues. You know, you, you were so quick to get married. Well, stick it out then. Stick and stay, make it pay, right? Amen. Stick and stay. You want to stick and stay with your marriage and not, uh, you, you want to be a whosoever, that, you don't want to be this whosoever. This is a warning against people that would commit adultery and cause someone to commit adultery. So Matthew chapter 12, let's look over at Matthew chapter 12. The Bible says in Matthew 12, 32, and whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him. So if you blaspheme the Son of Man, if you blaspheme Jesus Christ, then that thing can be forgiven you, right? And it says, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. And there's people that have done that. There's people that have blasphemed the Holy Ghost, and it says that they, it, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So that is... Uh, not a good whosoever. That's, it, you know, if, if people, people use Jesus Christ's name as a cuss word all the time. And it's good that, I mean, I'm, it's not good to blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that. But if they're blaspheming the Holy Ghost, that'd be a different story, right? But, you know, you don't see, you don't hear people do that. Isn't that interesting? Like, people don't usually use the Holy Ghost as, the, as a cuss word, right? They'll say God, They'll say Jesus, but they won't usually say the Holy Ghost. Have you ever noticed that? I don't know. That's just something I noticed. But if you, if you speak a word against the Holy Ghost, it's not going to be forgiven you. That's what the Bible says, and that's a very dangerous thing to do. And, you know, I've, I've preached before, before here about that blasphemy challenge where people actually set up a website where you could get people to blaspheme the Holy Ghost on, on camera. I mean, what kind of sick, demonic people would put something up like that? And, and, you know, don't ever do something like that. You know, sometimes kids do dumb things, but don't do something that dumb. Because there's a strict warning that you can't be forgiven for that, right? Amen. Look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 15. Revelation chapter 22, verse number 15. Bible says, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. This is talking about people that would go to hell. Um, these are, these are, are yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to be allowed to be in heaven. See, God, it's God's house. It's God's heaven. God made everything. And you know what? He makes the rules on who goes there and who doesn't. You know what he says? He's excluding people here that are not going to get to go. He's excluding people that would do these wicked sins and not get saved. Obviously, if you get saved, you still get to go to heaven. But whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, who's, you know, all these different sins that it's saying, those people are without. And God doesn't have to let them in. You know, do you just let anybody in your house that just walks up to your door? I don't. You just don't know what they're like, you know. So... And there's some people that by choice, you would say, you're not allowed in my house. I'm sure there's people in here that have had uh, experiences where you're like, hey, you can't come over anymore. Or you're not allowed in my house. And, you know, that's your house. That's your rules. And God's the same way. People are like, "How God, God's forgiving. He forgives everybody. No, he doesn't. He only forgives people that are saved. And, and sometimes people that are saved, he's still angry with. <laughs> So, you know, we still have to live the Christian life and still keep God's commandments, not to be saved, but obviously to be in a right relationship with God, right? So that's all the negative stuff, all right? Well, most of it anyway. So, um, so number two tonight, whosoever as a personal choice. See, we, God has some verses where he talks about people having a personal choice 
And that personal choice can grant them one way or the other. And so whosoever is a personal choice, let's go back to Exodus chapter 35. Exodus chapter 35. So point number one was whosoever is a painful warning. Point number two is whosoever is a personal choice. Now look at verse number five in Exodus chapter 35. It says, take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. An offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. Now, this is a special offering that's being taken up here, but God is saying, there's, there's people that would say that we don't have our own free will. Who, who's heard of that Calvinistic wicked doctrine? Obviously, most people in here probably have heard of it, but if you have a willing heart to do something, that's a choice that you get to make, right? Not, you, know, you just had the vision offering, and some people probably gave, and some people, I'm sure, didn't. You know, and, and obviously it's not a for, it's, it's called, you know, it's, that would be what would be called a free will offering. You know, the, you know, Pastor Menes gets up with the challenge and, and the things that are needed for the vision offering, and some people give to it and some people don't. But does it make you not right with God if you don't give to it? No. Um, it says whosoever has a willing heart. And so some people don't have a willing heart, and that's fine. That's your choice. But, you know, God is going to bless you for having a willing heart. This was a special offering for the stuff for the tabernacle, but, you know, God wants us to have a willing heart, Amen. you know. He wants us to have a willing heart, and he says, whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of, unto the Lord. And so there's nothing wrong with giving more. You know, obviously, God wants us to give 10%. There's nothing wrong with giving more, though. There's nothing wrong with only giving 10% either, though. So, I mean, that's what I believe, but um, if I'm wrong about that, then, you know, if I'm, anything I say that is, is different than what Pastor Menace says, then he's always right. So, but I think he, he agrees with me on that. So, but anyway, so we do have personal choices. We, there, you know, a free will offering means that you give it of your own free will. And so that would like just, there's one verse that would just say, well, Calvinism can't be right then. Because otherwise God just making you do that. Yeah. And that's not what it says, right? It says that you are of a willing heart, you know. And so it says whosoever is of a willing heart. So look at Matthew chapter 5. Verse number 19, Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Here's another choice. So you can have a choice to willingly give. And obviously, even tithing, you still have to willingly give, right? You know, we don't, it's not like Pastor Jimenez is like the Mormons and just walks up to your door, hey, you missed your tithes this week, you know? He doesn't do that, does he? The, but the Mormon church does do that. <laughs> My grandma was part of the Mormon church a long time ago, and she said that they came to the door and gave her a bill for her tithing. She's like, get out of here and don't ever come back. So, amen, Grandma. But, uh, yeah, so even though the tithe is something we're supposed to pay, it's a commandment of God, it's still up to you to do that. And that's, that takes faith sometimes. And sometimes as a new Christian, like, people are like, and let me just help you with something. As a new Christian, sometimes you're like, I don't see how I'm going to pay this bill and pay the 10%. But you know what? God is going to make the ends meet. Amen. He promises to do that. You know, he says, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. He's going to pour out the, out of the windows of heaven a blessing for you. And you're like, I just don't know. Loosen your grip on that money. Yeah. Loosen your grip on it. Because, you know, he's going to rebuke the devourer for, for your sake when you give to the Lord. He's going to rebuke the devourer. But you know what's going to happen when you're like, I don't know, I just, I got to hang on to this 10%. Your car is going to break down. It's yeah. telling you right now. You're going to get flat tires. You know, you're not going to have enough money for groceries. The money that you thought you were saving is going to get spent on other stuff. It's called a new dishwasher, new washer dryer. You know, so if your washer and dryer keeps breaking down every month, maybe you should start tithing. <laughs> and look, it does take faith to tithe. But once you have that faith to do that, then you'll never turn back from it. You know, I'm not sitting here just trying to drain you of your money or something. It's like, I don't know, this guy is just talking about money. But, you know, money gets talked about in the Bible sometimes. So, um, and it's, you know, I don't want to, I don't even care what you give. Honestly, it doesn't matter to me. I, I, you know, I'm not your pastor. But I'll tell you what, it's going to matter to you and your family. Because God's going to bless you when you give. And, you know, 
you're going to add up the bills. It's not going to make sense. I'm telling you that right now. Whoever is not tithing, I don't know who it is. Pastor didn't tell me, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you'll look at your bills and be like, how can I give? How can I do this? It's like, just believe God. Believe his promise. Because that's like the, one of the one things you can prove God with in the Bible. If you give the tithe, he's going to make sure that you're taken care of. Period. So... Anyway, um, where, where was I at here? Um, Matthew 5.19. Thank you. Matthew 5.19. Here's another whosoever. Whosoever shall, uh, therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So people that teach other people, you know, some people will teach to break God's commandments. But it, does it say that they're still going to heaven? Yeah, they're still going to heaven. But, you know, the, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach men shall be least in the kingdom of heaven. So you don't want to be least in the kingdom of heaven. But so you have a choice here. So whosoever is a personal choice in this verse, and it's saying, hey, if you want to break, if you want to teach people to break the commandments, well, guess what? You're going to be least. You're going to be the person cleaning the toilets or whatever. I don't know what that means exactly, but uh, you're going to be least, all right? But you also have a choice to do and teach the, the commandments, to, to, to do and teach the right things. And the Bible says, it doesn't say you're going to be the greatest in heaven, but it says you'll be great in heaven. And so, hey, and, and not everybody here is a pastor or, or a teacher in that way, but you still teach your children, don't you? You still teach uh, your 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 wife, or whatever, you teach people at the door when you, when you preach the gospel to them. So, you know, it, it's, but some people will try to teach something wrong because they know that they want to do something wrong, right? And so don't get caught up in that because you don't want to be, you know, the person, hey, you know, Brother Oliver, it's time to go clean the toilet again. Sorry, you were teaching, you know, the wrong, <laughs> the wrong things. I'm sorry, Brother Oliver. But, uh, yeah, you don't want to be that that person's least. You want to make the choice. You want to be the whosoever that's going to be great in the kingdom of heaven because you're teaching the right things to people. Turn to Matthew 7, 24. Matthew 7, 24. Matthew 7, 24 says, Never heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And so you have a choice to hear the sayings of his and do them. See, some people just hear things, but they don't do them. But God wants us to be doers of the word and not just hearers only, right? Amen. And it says, I will like liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. You don't want to be the, the person that built your house upon sinking sand. You want to do the commandments and, and do the hearing the things that you hear of Christ, the things that you read in the Bible, that you, you want to apply those things to your life, and you want to do them. Don't just read it and say, yeah, I'm not going to do that. You want to read it and do them. And you're going to be, and when the storms come, the storms of life come, you're, all, you're on a rock instead of sinking sand. Amen. Me and Pastor and Brother Oliver were walking up this hill. Where was that at? Was that, well, that was in Santa Cruz, I think. In Santa Cruz, we're walking up this hill, and it's just all this sand. And it's like, I was just thinking, you know, that's like, you know, being on sinking sand. It's easier to walk on a rock than it is sinking sand. So that sinking sand was like a, a calf burner workout. So anyway, and I got roasted at that point, I guess. I don't know what happened. But anyway, so let's look over at Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. And course, I don't bring my cell phone up, so I'm looking up, and it says 425. Is it, is it, is it actually, it's not 25 after, is it? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, well, now, now you guys are hosed, so now I'm just going to keep preaching until I'm done. So anyway, Matthew chapter 23, verse 12, whosoever does not change the clock is going to be chastised with scorpions by Pastor Thompson. All right, Matthew chapter 23, verse 12 says, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. So look, here's another whosoever choice that you have in your life. 
Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. You know, the principle here is that if you, if you want to make yourself some great thing and you want to walk around acting like you're the best that ever was and ever will be, then the Bible says you're going to be abased. That means you're going to be taken down a notch. You know why? Because God doesn't like pride. God likes humbleness. God likes meekness. It says, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So we have a choice here as a whosoever. It says, if you exalt yourself, you're going to be abased. So if you want to be great, then be humble. You know, humble yourself. And then God will exalt you in due time, like the Bible says. So, you know, it's the opposite of what people would think. That's what the world does. That's what the, the sports players do. I'm the best that ever was, and, you know. I always think of that uh, when the San Francisco 49ers got whooped. by. Uh, but Richard Sherman gets up, you know, and he's just like, I'm the greatest that ever played the game, you know. And he's just, like, bragging about how great of a corner is. But by the way, he's back in Seattle. But uh, anyway, so he'll be the greatest again. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He did all he could for San Francisco. It just didn't work out. But anyway, sorry, I'm bringing up worldly football. But <laughs> what I'm saying is that people that play sports and people that, that in the world, they, that's what they do. They exalt themselves, and, you know, they're going to be taken down a notch. I'm sure Richard Sherman's got burnt for a lot of touchdowns after he made that great play. But um, because why? Because he, you know, anybody that's like that, eventually they're going to get abased. Michael Jordan's not the best basketball player in the world anymore. You know, now he's just a, you know, a gambling whatever. He sits back and talks about the good old days. But he's still not, he's not the best. See, eventually, you, you say that you're the best and you're the greatest, and, and at some point, age is going to catch up to you, and you're not going to be the greatest anymore. So take this principle into mind uh, that if you're, you know, that whosoever, it's given you a choice to be humble or be proud. Obviously, we don't want to be humble. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 4. Here's a, another choice that people have. So when warning is given by the man of God, you know, obviously this is talking, you know, this is it's taking a picture and saying, because back, back in the Middle East, in these times, they had walls around cities, right? And they had people that would blow a trumpet if there was some kind of warning that had to take place. Like this army is coming against the city, they blow the trumpet, and the people that don't, you know, run for cover or whatever they're supposed to do, they get killed. So look what it says in verse 4. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. And what the Bible's teaching here is that, you know, and obviously applying this spiritually, as it should be, then when you're warned about something in the Bible and you don't take heed to that and something happens in your life, you know, some issues are happening in your life and you had a chance to do things right, but then you failed to do things right. Well, look what it says. His blood shall be upon his own head. This would include, you know, obviously people that are, um, that are sinful and, and won't be saved. You know, when we go to people's doors and try to warn them about, uh, you know, the fact that they're, going, they're headed for a devil's hell, and that they're sinful and they need to be saved, you know, we, we come and blow that trumpet for people, don't we? And a lot of times we just knock and they're just like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it happens. And sometimes they say some colorful thanks to us. Sometimes they threaten to beat us up. You know, I got threatened to be beat up, I think, with Brother Vladi one time. And people just don't, they don't want to hear the truth. And so, but we're going through with the trumpet trying to warn people and, you know, guess what's going to happen when we warn that person for the last time? The sword's going to come. Right. And their blood is going to be upon their own head. But even just applying that to ourselves, when we get warnings from the Word of God, pastor gets up here and just, you know, rips your face off and tries to warn you against something that you're, a trap that you're falling into, some kind of sin that you might be falling into, and then you don't listen, you know, your blood's going to be upon your own head because you didn't listen. So now turn to Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. This is the last verse I'll have you turn to. Uh, well, actually, I got a couple more here for this point. But uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. It says, And the smoke of their torment 
ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. You receive the mark of the beast, you're done. That's what the Bible teaches, right? This is a very, um, you know, you have the, you, but you do have a choice, right? This is a, your personal choice as a whosoever. There's going to be people that are going to take the mark of the beast. And you know what? It's going to be their choice. Their choice. Because God's not going to do something to you like that because someone forced it on you, right? These people have a choice. And it is going to be tied to money. It's going to be tied to, you know, your COVID vaccine or whatever. Who knows? But all this stuff's going to be tied, and you're not going to be able to buy or sell or do anything like that. And there's going to be people that are going to say, you know what? I know that that's true. I know what this is, but I'm still going to take it anyway. And they're going to receive the mark of the beast. And the Bible says that they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. So people do have a choice to take the mark of the beast or not. And when they do, they're going to bring unto themselves damnation. Now turn to Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Here's a good choice. And the Spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life. What does it say? Freely. Amen, right? So the Bible teaches that we can come to and get salvation, and you know what? It's free. Amen. But it says, whosoever will. Here's another checkmate for the Calvinists, right? How do you explain that? It says, whosoever. That means what? Anyone, right? Whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. So that would be kind of weird if you didn't have a choice to get saved or not. If God is doing all the choices for you, God is choosing everything for you, then that verse does not make sense. So whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. It's a choice. It's a choice to be saved. Nobody is forced to be saved. Just like nobody is forced to take the mark of the beast, nobody's going to be forced to take that water of life freely. So point number three, it's my last point tonight. Whosoever as a promise, whosoever as a promise. Let's look over at John chapter 11, verse number 26. John chapter 11, verse number 26. So there's verses that teach that anyone that does, you know, these, whatever it's going to say in these verses, you get that as a promise. God's promising you that. Look at verse number 26. It says, And whosoever liveth and what? Believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So that's a promise from God. Whosoever liveth and believeth in who? The Lord Jesus Christ shall never die. That means you'll never set one foot in hell ever. And that includes anybody from the Old Testament too. The Old Testament saints weren't roasting in hell until Jesus came, and then he had to go in and bring them back out. That's not true. They didn't spend a second in hell, and we won't either. Anybody that's saved has the promise that you will never die. You will never die, and dying means what? You're going to hell. And none of us in this room that's saved is ever going to set foot in there for one second. Jesus Christ did that for us, didn't he? Now turn to 1 John chapter 5. Verse 1, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, what are we talking about? Whosoever as a promise. God promises us certain things, and he's not going to break that promise. See, we're, God is, the Bible says God is faithful, right? God is faithful. Now, if you want to say, there's people that we would say, that person's a faithful person. They're, they're faithful to church. They're faithful to the things of God. But you're not faithful like God is. See, we fail. We're men and women. We fail. We do things wrong all the time. We're not faithful like God is. God is always faithful. And God always keeps his promises, no matter what. Look what the Bible says. Verse number one. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is what? 
born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat love, loveth him also that is begotten of him. But it says, whosoever, what? Believeth. You're born of God. You're a child of God. The moment you get saved, you become a child of God. You become born again, like the Bible says in the book of John in chapter 3, what, what, what Brother Oliver read for us earlier. So now turn to John chapter 4, verse 14. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So whosoever believeth, you know, and that person that receives Christ, he gives us the power to become the sons of God. He gives us that power. It's a promise of God that once we believe, we are born of God. We are in the family of God forever. John 4, verse 14 says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So obviously this is talking about the woman in the well, and he's, he's speak, Jesus is speaking to her, and he says, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. That's a promise. You're never going to, and so he's talking about that spiritual water, isn't he? He's not talking about the water that was in the well. He's using that as a picture to show that the water that he gives is something that is never, we're never, you're never going to thirst. Isn't it nice? Wouldn't it be nice to never be thirsty again? You know, because we drank water because why? We're thirsty. But the water that Jesus gives, that's never going to run out. And it's going to, it's the, but it says, the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That well never runs dry. Amen. That well lasts forever, and that's, you're, you're, you're going to have everlasting life. That means you have a life that never ends. Right? I know that a lot of people have a hard time with that, that when we're out soul winning, you know, say, you know, do you know, if you, if you say that you're saved, could you ever lose it? And they're like, oh, yeah, you could lose everlasting life. It's like, bleep, 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 bleep. how do you lose everlasting life? It lasts forever. That doesn't make sense. But see, the things of God are foolishness to people that are not saved. They just don't understand it. But we understand it because the word everlasting means it lasts forever. So that, therefore, <laughs> you know, logic and, and just... Common sense would tell you that it lasts forever when it says everlasting life. So, and I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm here at the end, but I wanted to show the the four most important whosoever's we can teach other people when it comes to soul winning. So, the four most important whosoever's that we can teach when it comes to soul winning. And I'm not trying to tell you to change your soul winning, okay? So don't don't get that from this. But um, let's look at James chapter two verse ten. So when we go through our soul winning plan of salvation, there's, there's four major whosoever's that we run to. You know, if you do the same soul winning plan that I think that you do, there's four major whosoever's that you're going to run into while you're giving people the gospel. And I, and I do take the time to just say right from the get-go, what does whosoever mean? And, you know, sometimes people don't really know. And so I just explain to them that it means anyone, right? So James 2.10 and I'm sure everybody in here uses this verse to show people that everybody is a sinner, right? James 2.10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And so we use this verse to say, hey, you know, maybe you've not murdered somebody, but you know, if you're a liar, the Bible says that if you, do, if you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. You're, you're a sinful person. You are a sinner. Because, you know, sometimes there, every once in a while there's a hard case that will say, yeah, well, I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that sinful or whatever. But when you show them this verse, it says whosoever. What does whosoever mean? Anyone, right? So the second major whosoever that you find in your soul winning plan is found in Revelation chapter 20, verse number 14. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 14. I'm sure everybody goes to these verses here also. Revelation chapter, so the first thing we, we show them, the first whosoever we show them is going to be that if you don't, if you offend in one point of law, then you're guilty of all. You're, you're, you're a sinner. 
Revelation chapter 20, verse 14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And what does it say? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. And so that shows them that anybody, that means anybody, that is not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire. That means they're going to hell. And so it's not just some people, it's anybody that's not found written in that book. You know the book where God can blot you out of? That's the same book. So the Lamb's Book of Life is what it's called also, but, you know, if you... If you're not found written in that book, you're going to hell. And so that's the second major whosoever that we would show somebody in our soul winning plan. Now let's go back to John chapter 3, where we first started tonight. John chapter 3. See, because when people realize it's not just them, it's not just you, it's everybody, then they kind of feel all-inclusive, don't they? <laughs> it's easier for, you know, if the Bible's saying that anyone, whosoever, you know, and then it says, says these statements, then they, they have to kind of come to the conclusion that's talking about them also, right? So what does it say in verse 15? John three fifteen says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So obviously, again, John 3, 16 is the most famous verse in the whole Bible. And, you know, once you've shown them, hey, anybody that doesn't keep the whole law, you know, if they, if they offend in one point, they're guilty of all of it. And so that's whosoever, anybody, right? And then number two, Anybody, whosoever is not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire. And then in John 3, 15, and, and these are the verses that are going to give them that, that healing and that grace, right? Whosoever believeth in him. So when they think about, you know, whosoever, well, whosoever means me. I'm a sinner. Whosoever is not written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. That means me. I'm going to hell. And then they come to this verse, and you show them this verse, and you say, see, just like the other whosoever's, this whosoever, as long as you believe in Jesus, you're not going to perish. You don't have to go to hell. Amen. You have everlasting life, a life that never ends. And that's a great verse to show people when you're giving them the gospel, and a great whosoever verse in your soul winning plan. Now, look at Romans chapter 10. This will be the last verse we go to tonight. Romans chapter number 10. See, it wasn't 162 places we turned tonight. It was quite a few, but not 162. So anyway, Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Now, of course, once you've shown them, you know, that whosoever uh, doesn't keep the whole law, they're, they're, they're guilty of all. Whosoever is not found written in the book of life, they're going to hell. And so you have to be written in that book of life. How do you get written in that book of life? Well, you got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you must call upon him and ask him for salvation, right? That's what we believe. I know that you guys believe that at this church, that, you know, the calling upon the name of the Lord, I know that's been under attack before. But what does the Bible say? Look at Romans 10, 13. The last whosoever that I go to in my soul winning plan is once I get him to the door, then I try to get him to walk through it, Right? So Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. It's not a might be, it could be, no. You shall be saved. So when they call upon the Lord and they ask them for salvation, and they're that whosoever, see, when, when I show them, I just say, well, hey, it says whosoever believeth, right? You said you believe. But then whosoever shall call, you know, so if you call, what does it say? You'll be saved. And so um, that's, that's kind of how I land the plane with them. And I just kind of, you know, that's what I personally do. And I'm not, I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying that you should recognize the fact, though, that those, ver those words are in there. And when you're, when you're going through your soul winning plan, you know, sometimes people have a hard time understanding that it's them. 
And so with that word whosoever, that does show them that it's anybody, right? Anyone. And so anybody that's not kept the whole law, they're guilty of all. They're sinful. And the Bible says there's a penalty for that sin. It's death. And so if they don't want to die and be cast in a lake of fire, then, you know, because anybody that's not written in that book is being cast in there. And that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Um, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that anybody that would call upon his name, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. These are powerful, powerful verses that at your disposal that you all use in your soul winning plan. And so they're great verses to help people understand that it means anyone, right? It means whosoever. So just in review, whosoever is a powerful word. It means anyone. Attached, um, it's attached truce in the Bible makes it all more powerful. I, and, you know, the promises, uh, the painful warning of anybody, um, also the personal choices that we, that we have, and the promise, whosoever as a promise, whosoever as a personal choice, whosoever as a painful warning, whosoever, you know, can mean the changing of somebody's destiny. You know, these words, these last four verses that I went through, they can t- change someone's eternal destiny. And so it's important for us to under, you know, these verses are great. And, you know, I've really had a good time studying for this. But, you know, if we don't put them into action, if we don't put them in, in, into place, then it, it really means nothing. And we got to really, this world's getting more sinful. It's getting more wicked. It's getting harder. But God's word is never going to let us down. The promises of God are never going to let us down. And the Bible still has power. The gospel still has power. And if we can get out there and change this world one soul at a time, one family at a time, that's what we need to be doing. And so whosoever is a very important uh, term in the Bible, and especially with these last verses that I, that I showed you. So um, I pray that you would consider those things. And, and even if you know, you're not emphasizing it in your soul winning, um, it is important that people understand that these verses apply to not just everybody else, but to that person also. And so when you bring that to someone's attention, it can be a powerful way to convince people. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much uh, for this great night in church and, and pray that you'd help us to, uh, to just make sure that we're going out and reaching that whosoever. There, I was a whosoever at one point, and everybody in here that's saved was a whosoever that believed, Lord, and uh, that we called upon your name. Pray you'd help us to, to bring that message to other people, Lord, that they could be a whosoever that believeth also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.